Hey, it's Jason again, talking about Planning Center Services today. This is a little bit of an introduction for beginners. You've probably heard about services, maybe even you've seen your worship team talk about or use Planning Center Services. It has been around forever. I'm talking early 2000s, and actually, Planning Center Services is the OG in all of the Planning Center apps. It launched the whole suite. So Planning Center Services has a lot of layers. It has a lot of functionality, but most most of the time we see this in a worship centric kind of scenario but this video is just a quick introduction for people who are jumping in for the first time want to kind of find their way around in services and understand the simple part that they need to know about scheduling volunteer teams you might have your connections team or your kids ministry team or whatever team you have a scheduled rotation for this video is for you so go ahead Watch this video and keep an eye out for part two and part three, maybe even a part four. Um, we built these videos with the idea that everybody kind of uses these differently, but this is an easy, simple introduction. And the second part will just take you a little bit further and each video hopefully will build on the previous one. So watch out for the series that we create later. And, you know, we make these videos for people who want to learn more about Planning Center. And that's our heart. We love helping people with Planning Center. Um, we're at Threefold Solutions. If you want to check us out, go to threefold.solutions, see what we're all about and how we might be able to help you with some coaching or some training inside a planning center. We love to help people get better at using planning center, whether that's strategies and procedures or maybe just efficiencies and how to do it better. All that stuff is something that we're experts at and love to do. So that's why we make these videos and that's to help you. And if you'd like to know more, come visit us at threefold.solutions. And also subscribe, subscribe to this video because we're gonna keep cranking these out and hopefully just keep giving you some value by showing you uh, different ways that you can utilize Planning Center better. So with all of that aside, let's jump into this video and take a look at an introduction to Planning Center Services. In this video, we're going to talk about utilizing Planning Center Services for volunteer teams and scheduling. And if you're someone who's heard of services and have never used it, this is for you. In this video, we're going to talk about navigating services, how to get your initial structure and layout set up, and we're also going to talk about where some things are located. So to begin with and jump right in here, the first time you go to services inside a planning center, it's a very good likelihood that you're going to see my schedule. And right at the top here, that's the first button or first menu item that you see. And my schedule is just simply where you have an option to see upcoming schedule dates, plans, places where you'll be scheduled, as well as the opportunity to manage your block out dates, and email your team leaders, uh, email um, just in general and get messages here. It's a communication portal, so to speak. You also have this calendar over on the left. And one of the things I think a lot of times people can miss, and I just want to point this out, is over below the uh, calendar, you have this subscribe button. And when you click on that, you'll get an actual RSS feed to either a Google Calendar or an iCal type of feed. And you could add this to your own personal calendar if you want to keep your schedule on your calendar for the times that you serve or when you're you're leading a team and you want to keep that schedule there. That's a great place to go grab that and download that. Um, sometimes people like to have that in Outlook right next to their work schedules. So just pointing that out. And then there's also this little add blockouts button over there where you could add some blockout dates where you're not able to serve. Maybe you're going on vacation for the weekend or something along those lines. This is where we add those blockout dates. We'll talk about those a little bit more, but just from the standpoint of navigating services, this is generally where you're going to land when you first log in. Now, where we really want to go is to the next option, which is called plans. And you'll notice when you hover over this in the future, any place you've recently visited with schedules or plans that you've worked on, they're going to be suggested in a drop down menu. Now, we've recently selected or we've recently worked on the connections team weekend plan, and that's why it's showing that. But if I just click on the plans button here, it's going to take me to what I call the the root folder of where you last were. And so in this case, you'll notice that I'm in inside of a folder and it shows this little folder icon here 
And it's empty. It's, it's asking me, do you want to start here with a service type or do you want to delete this folder or create a new folder? Well, I actually want to navigate a little bit here. So I want to talk about this text up in the left hand corner. This is the folder or the destination that you're looking at. But just to the left of that, you're going to find this little arrow that points over to the left and shows you an additional drop down menu you have the ability to go through this hierarchy and click on the next level up. And at that point, you're actually seeing something here that looks like the root folder or as far up as you can go. This is the beginning of the hierarchy inside of services and everything is based on a hierarchy and that is folders and service types and plans. And we'll look at this a little bit more as we start to get into some of these places. But right across the top here, you can see this little icon that looks like a folder and we're representing representing three folders right here. We have Kids Weekend Service, we have Roanoke Campus, and we have Westmont Campus. If you're at a church where you have more than one campus, many times it might make sense. And I say many times because a lot of churches will put their campuses into folders and keep everything for that campus in that one folder. And it's real easy to kind of organize and keep things structured that way because you do have the option, as you can see here, to have something called a service type out in the open and you can have many of these right here and if you're at a single campus church it's very very possible that you could put all of your service types here maybe you just have one service type for the weekend service adult weekend services but many times you're probably scheduling multiple teams and you might want to have those service types specific to the to the areas of ministry that might be scheduling teams like your connections teams or your kids teams or, or students teams and so the way that this generally works is you're going to see a, a hierarchy with a root folder, which is the highest level you can go. And that's what we're looking at right now for threefold church. And then we've also got some additional folders. And if we click on one of those folders, we can go inside of it. And that's where we started. But we're going to go back by clicking on this little arrow here. And we're going to just click on each folder and show you that you can navigate in and out of those. And then we've got one here called Kids Weekend Services. Now, our Kids Weekend Service. With this, maybe this actually is specific to a campus. If it is, it might want to actually live inside of one of these. So if it was the Roanoke Campus Kids Weekend Service, we might want that folder to live here. Or if we were to go to that folder, it does give us the option to create a new folder here. And then I also want to mention this little sprocket or wheel uh, icon up in the right hand corner there. You can also edit your folder and add a folder here. So if we wanted to do the same thing, we could say kids weekend services or service. And it's going to ask us, where does this go? Does this go in the folder you're currently in, which would be none, same as parent. You're going to see this word a lot, especially dealing with permissions inside of services. And we'll take a look at that a little bit later. But same as parent means where you reside or the folder in which you're currently residing. And then you also have the option to just see that hierarchy here. And so in this case, we actually want it to be in the folder that we're in, which is the Roanoke campus folder. And you can see that over here on the left. And so we're just going to accept this and put this folder right here. So it looks like a new folder and it is. But again, if I hover over here on the arrow, I can see that I'm actually three levels in now. I'm inside a threefold church inside the Roanoke campus, and I've just created a new folder called Kids Weekend Service. So if I back up one level, each time I click, I'm going back out. Now we should see once we go inside a Roanoke campus, an additional folder. And sure enough, it's right there. Now we can just begin by creating subfolders, which is what this is. And then inside of that folder, we can also create what they call service types. We'll talk about service types in just a second, but ultimately a service type is how we actually add teams and plans. Now, when you click on add service type from that drop down menu there, one of the things you'll be presented with is some suggestions on how to set up a service type. Now, maybe with this one, we're going to call this the kids weekend schedule. And maybe this is going to be weekly. We have the option to set the frequency here. And so there's lots of different choices there. But ultimately, it's going to give you a little bit of help. What type of service is this? You don't have to choose anything here in these examples. It's just making an, a, 
a little bit of a suggestion for you. But in this case, we'll just name it Kids Weekend Schedule and we'll say Next Add Times by clicking on this button here. Now, once we do that, our little menu is a little goofed up here, but it's pushed the calendar over here to the right. But ultimately, it's asking us, when does this service start? Now, for us, the next upcoming Sunday is October 1st. So we can say, well, what time? does service actually start? And in our case, maybe that's 9 a.m. So we may say that's a 9 a.m. service and it goes till 10 a.m. We can add additional service times here. If we have more than one, we can just do that now. We could add both of them. But in this case, we're just gonna say 9 a.m. And then we're gonna click Add Teams. Now, when you go here, there's a suggested structure here. They're basically trying to help you out inside a planning center to give you some suggestions. So in this case, maybe we have children's ministry for our kids weekend schedule that we're creating. And they're basically giving us an opportunity to add this children's ministry example with some op with some other examples built inside of it. I'm gonna go ahead and choose that just to show you what those examples look like, but you're free to not choose anything and just click finish either way. When you click finish, you're gonna be taken to what looks like a plan. Now we haven't talked about plans yet, but you're basically looking at the beginnings or the makings of a plan. So in order to show you what, what we just did, I'm gonna back out of this plan and I'm gonna take us back to the structure because we're really looking at navigation right now. So let's back up here by clicking on this, I call it the tiny text right above the title here, each time you click on this tiny text, it's going to take us back one level. Now, we're currently looking at Kids Weekend Services. And again, if I hover, I notice that I'm inside of the Roanoke Campus folder and I'm inside of the Kids Weekend Service folder. And I've just created what they call a service type. That's this gray bar. And ultimately inside of that, we now have a plan that was default added for us when we walked through the setup. Now remember these gray bars represent service types. Now those service types can be just about any type of ministry area you're wanting to, to manage or schedule or structure. Service types are made up of multiple things. They're kind of like a folder all by themselves. They are made up of teams, plans, and templates. So inside of this, we have a plan, but if we go over here to the little sprocket, little wheel on the far right and click on it, we also see teams and templates here as well. We have some settings and we even have some reporting that we can do here, but teams and templates are the other two major components. So if I were to click on teams, it's going to take us to the teams area here. And you can see we've got some tabs that represent those menu items and we've got teams and templates. And then we've got those reports and settings here as well. Now notice it did create a team for us called children's ministry. When we selected that on setup, it created this for us. And you'll notice here, you've got some icons. We'll talk more about this in the future. And then you've got a leader assigned to it. And that would be the person who created it, such as myself. And then you've got members, positions, and last scheduled and created. In this case, it created nine positions for us. So let's take a look at that. We're just going to click right here on children's ministry and you can see automatically, let's just move our, our bubble over here. You can see that there were some positions that were just automatically created and they were just plopped in here by planning center as suggested examples of maybe some positions that you you may have in your children's ministry. And in this case, maybe we've got twos and threes. And I notice, you know, maybe it's out of order a little bit here. And if it is, you can click on these little dots over to the left here and just move them around. So if you want to re kind of structure your schedule here or your positions, just click on those dots, pick it up and move it. And so in this case, we can just kind of navigate around where we want these and move them into position. And then we've got some roles here and really it's positions. Everybody who's on a team has a position. So you either have all team members at the top, you have team leaders, let's click on that. And that was myself. So threefold solutions is currently showing there. And then you're going to have positions and we're going to have to add people, add add different people to different roles here. And as we do that, we realize that maybe some of those people can actually serve in multiple positions. So it's really important to remember that all team members is truly all team members, but 
you know, maybe the K through two team or position has multiple people that actually serve in other areas as well. So just keep that in mind. We can add people to different places. Again, we're just talking about navigation here, so I don't want to get too much into the weeds here. We'll come back to teams in, in, a, in an upcoming video. So remember that when we're looking at teams, we've got some tabs here. You've got settings. Settings is, is where we're going to set certain types of parameters for this team. We'll come back to that when we talk about teams. And then we've got an automations tab here as well, which is really cool. And we now get to add some automations to it. So that's something new. And we'll talk about that when we talk about teams as well. Notice you've got your tiny text with a little arrow in between each one. And if I click on it just anywhere, it's going to take us up one level backwards. And now we're looking at the outside of this service type where the team is listed, which is called children's ministry. If we click on it one more time, we go back out to what we saw initially inside this folder that we're looking at called kids weekend service. And we have a service type here and it's kids weekend schedule. And here we also see that we've got a plan. That plan was created when we set this example up. If we click on the plan, we're going back into the plan. This is where we're going to set up the schedule. We'll come to this in, a, in an upcoming video, but I just wanted you to see how to navigate that. And if we click back on the tiny text, we go out. Now, if you want to keep going out to the top level, we just either hover over this little arrow and select the folder that we want to go to. And again, you can see in this case, the Roanoke campus just has a kids weekend service. And then, you know, ultimately, one of the things you want to remember is many times in many churches, your worship team has probably been using services all along. They've probably utilized services since it came out. So if that's true, we always like to say, let's be good stewards of services when we're jumping in for the first time and have a conversation with our worship team. Ask them how they have it structured and how we can structure our folders, our service types alongside them without bumping into them. Now, in some places, everybody likes to keep one one flow going, one service flow where one single uh, plan covers multiple teams and multiple areas. And that's great. But I always say communicate with those who also play inside of services so that when you're all scheduling, you're doing it together and no one's really stepping on somebody else's area accidentally. So always remember that. Always have communication, especially with your worship team, because chances are they probably got a good setup in there, and you don't want to mess that up, but you do want to complement it by adding your stuff in there similarly. So that's navigation inside of getting started on services. Next, we're going to look at the team part of it in the next video. So we'll cover a little bit more of the details on how to set up that team and how we add some people to it. But for right now, this is how we navigate around services.